Hi, I'm Chris Marsh, I'm the sound engineer for Ed Sheeran and we're here in Melbourne at the MCG. So here at this, this gig with Ed, uh, we now have a band, which is a, a, new, a new element of what we're doing, but there is still the traditional element of having the loop pedal that we've had for years, uh, but now that has evolved as well. So we now have five of those on the stage uh, that all get wirelessly controlled uh, by Ed uh, and come to me as more channels than they ever have done. So I've got about 16 channels coming from the, the loop pedal. And then we've got his vocal. He generally carries his vocal mic as he runs around the stage uh, and deals with the in the round situation. But we also have a secondary microphone and a spare microphone that are available for him to go to grab and, and, and use. The same goes for his loop pedal, his loop microphones. Uh, he loops vocals and we have positions of those. So multiple microphones coming in to the console, which is different to how we've done things in the past. Everything's dealt with by my, my, my trusty Q7 here. Uh, there are lots of challenges about mixing a stadium show, regardless of the act that you're, that you're working in. Mixing a stadium in the round is, is even more challenging. You've got reflections coming from, from everywhere, regardless of what the stadium is, in, but in every stadium has their own characteristics. So it could be that a certain shape of a stadium means the sub bass you cannot get it tight, it just wallows all around all the time. Whatever you do, you can't, you can't change that. And so you have to decide to make a decision whether you, you high pass everything out, you take those frequencies out and sacrifice some of that low end impact in the show for the benefit of clarity. Same way with the vocal, it could be the stadium reflects the vocal back at you and you need to decide then overall whether you're going to mix a little bit louder to try and overcome it. The challenge with this setup is that I've got bands that are in front of the band members in front of a PA. Uh, I've got a, a, a guy running around with an acoustic guitar who generally spends his time in the middle of all the hangs of PA and wearing an instrument that wants to feed back. So uh, most of my challenge throughout the show is with a button here on the console, muting and unmuting his guitar. So when he takes his hands off his guitar to address the audience or run around, it's, it's got to be muted, uh, otherwise it's gonna feed back. So my, my right hand gets quite a workout. Otherwise, yeah, it, 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 you just have to be willing to adapt your mix all the time to suit what you're hearing. The beauty of this console is the way that I can deal with what Ed provides to me. Obviously, Ed's providing a very energetic performance and it's not always spot on in terms of what he's playing and looping. Um, and obviously, I have to be spot on with what I'm doing because if we're not careful, things get into the loop, like a little bit of feedback gets into the loop. You then hear it every four bars, looping again and again, you get reminded of it for the entire so song. The same happens, Ed can uh, change channels when he's gone from playing a, a melodic part on the guitar to being a percussive part, and he doesn't change the channel to the percussive channel quick enough, and you get, a, you know, on the, on the end of the acoustic me melodic part. And the console helps me because I can then choose to, to gate, uh, that element of that channel or compress to the point where that, that becomes a ducking uh, effect so you can get rid of those little noyances of, of what Ed, Ed provides to me. The other wonderful thing about the change from the SD7 to the Q7 has been my ability to not have so much outboard. I loved my Avalon uh, vocal channels, absolutely loved them for years. I started having trouble with them as they were getting older, uh, so I was looking for a way of moving away, didn't really want to. But the Q7's given me the opportunity to get rid of them and actually I feel that I've improved the sound of Ed's vocal. It's actually helped me an awful lot. I'm using the classic uh, compressor from the, the Mustard selection. And I've also got the Chili 6 on Ed's, on Ed's vocal uh, system there. Uh, and that is really the only, the only elements that are now in the, in the chain for, for Ed's vocal, having gotten rid of the Avalons.